Good evening all. I wrap in with your market wrap up and this market wrap up is for your spider ETF and stock market on this Valentine's Day, the 14th of February, 2023. What a day. All right. CPI numbers came in hotter than thought. There's a new weighting. Rent counted for about 50% of the gain that we saw. Uh, used car prices down a fraction, but you know, there's big articles out there as to what's going on in the autos. And simply put, the manufacturers don't want to overproduce, so they say. And used car prices have stabilized. Uh, I, I wrote yesterday and I showed how much a new car, the average new car price to buy one, costs the average person each month. I think it's near $800. And it's no bargain with used cars. that They're quite expensive, too. So cars are becoming a luxury good. It's that simple. And, of course, that's that part. What do you do with the electric cars? They're another 25% more expensive than all these cars. So it's going to be a different game for a long time. The auto manufacturers can't use chips as the whole shortage. That's not a true story. I think what they're really doing is trying to keep themselves lean, keep prices up as they transition into electric cars, which are more profitable, as I understand it, for them. But as we get over here and we talk about the CPI, the story that's going to be argued from now through the next uh, FOMC meeting in March is the typical battle. The naysayers saying, nope, you're wrong. The economy's strong enough. We are not going to have a recession. In fact, Wells Fargo today, I saw the analysts come out and say the bear market is over before the CPI numbers came out. Uh, and then you're going to get the people that come out and say, this Fed has to stay higher, over 5%, maybe 5, 5.5% before it's all said and done. And no, with inflation not willing to any longer drop in an accelerated manner, they've got to keep the rates up higher for a longer period of time. So the idea that you're going to drop it back this year at any point, that's the battleground. Will it or won't it happen? Will inflation magically start down again and accelerate? Or is it going to do what it did with these January numbers actually tick up in some areas? Then we'll get back to the labor. And the labor is very important. You saw Airbnb after the close today. It was up 12%. Business as strong as can be. But relate that. Keep going with it. You're on a trip, you're traveling, you're going out, you're going somewhere, you're doing things. The service, what about the service? What about all the people that are taking care of you? Whether you're in an Airbnb, a resort, it doesn't matter. You need the restaurant help, you need all that help. Well, where is the labor so strong from? The service industry still. Do you see that going away? I mean, Airbnb is telling you it's not gonna go away. I know you'll say, Ira, that's such a far stretch. I don't think it is. You know, where I went to school, two and two is five. Well, maybe four is bad days. All right. When we look at SPY, you are still in this congestion area. That's the right way to call this. This market's trying to decide right now, does it try to probe and break out over the 4,200 level? Or is it going to get back under the uh, 405 area? and come down, I said 4,200, 420 area, and come down from the 405 area. That's what it's working on. As you look at the numbers, the trend is down because you still have lower highs, lower lows, but it's over the 18-day average, and that means the bias is up. The market tried and did try for a number of times here, back in the, the beginning of the year, right up until early February, hitting the upper Bollinger Band, the black dash line over and over. And recently it's backed away. Doesn't mean it can't get up there and probe it again at 418.75, but can it turn into an uptrend? Defined as higher lows, higher highs. No, right now, even if it just soared to the upside, you have a lower low, you could get a higher high, which tells me that upper Bollinger Band is gonna act as a restraint in the near term. In addition, momentum in the market is still overbought. Now, can this turn bearish suddenly? Well, today's high was 415.05. I don't think so. I think that this high is actually higher than that high if you look at it. I think you'd end up with a higher high, lower low. I think you're in a mess of a chart right now. In UGA, this is exactly what I was looking for. 
When I did my metal, when I did my gasoline report about a week ago, we were over here and I thought that the 100 day average would hold. I thought you'd go back to the 18 and consolidate against that and the 200 day average. That's just what I think is going on. You get your first indication of a buy signal in this. If prices were to close over 60, 96, that would carry you over the 200 day average and it would carry you over the 18 day average. That would be the first sign and you already have the higher highs, higher lows. Has it occurred? It hasn't. Where's the resistance? Right at that point. I'd like it to just fight a battle here and consolidate. Apple's ex exceptionally overbought. The trend is down, the bias is up, and you had a bullish piece of uh, event today. What took place today? Do you see it in front of you? Let me walk you to it. Want you to look at the 18 day average back here. I'll take you back to Friday. It is under the 200 day average. Yesterday we started approaching the number. This is Monday, today's Tuesday. And today you got over it. That's a bullish event. So now the short term average has gotten over the longest term average. It is overbought. If you rally from here, the objective would be 158.07. So I'm watching it very hard. In AMC, obviously the, the idea of those seats isn't helping. Markets come down, it needs to get some good movies in there. But that's a big break, my friends. You've just gone down $2 on a stock that was peaked out at 633 and you've just lost $2 of that. In round figures, you've lost a 30% value of it. So it has come down. I'm gonna repeat, movie theaters have a serious problem. I was out last night with one of my buddies and I was telling him, I said, if I were back in it and if AMC would listen, please, we all want movie theaters to succeed. Take your movie and put an intermission in them. Let people go buy candies and go to the bathroom and they'll come back. Do it the right way, you know, you, you have it done there. Talk to the movie studios. Why wouldn't that work? You'd make more money. And I think on a movie that's almost two hours long and on, it's, it's a godsend. In XLF, you got a higher high, lower and low, and you're overbought. I don't see a setup there. XLI, lower and low, higher high, overbought. Now, these markets are trying to figure out what to do. Everybody's all excited about NVIDIA and all the semiconductors, rightly so, with this new artificial intelligence that's gonna go into browsers and everything. You know, the big battle is gonna be Microsoft versus Alphabet and everything that goes on through there. I see it, but don't get ahead of yourself. It's going to take years for these things to work their way through. The software doesn't work all that well if you've given it a try. It's fun. I've tried it. and It's interesting. Uh, you get wrong answers and right answers, but I see the potential of it. So what the market is, is right now not doing anything. You got the trend down, the bias up. You're not in anything there. Home builders are the same darn thing. Trend down, bias up. I'm sitting here twiddling my thumbs, looking for things to do in the market. I like energy, I'm bullish. This action is now higher lows, higher highs. So the, I think the trade's gonna support the market at 89.10 and at 88.81, they'll step away. If it gets there, they'll say, okay, you can't keep holding it. The market has to prove it can run. It had a very bearish set of numbers uh, tonight from the API numbers. Uh, out of five weeks, it's the fourth out of five weeks where you've had big builds in energy, plus the government in all its wisdom we got 26 million barrels of strategic oil now gonna come out at the marketplace. It is not the president's fault. This had to do in 2015 as part of a budget deal when they were doing things. I can't see why they didn't go in and change that. It's crazy. In gold, okay, are you embedding? Now, what's it take to embed and what is embedding? Embedding occurs when the slow stochastic gets under 20 and stays there for several days or more. So you need numbers both under 20. Well, you had it today, you had it on Monday, and lo and behold, you had it on Friday. You didn't have it the day before. So if this market gives a nice little rally here, what do I think? I think the professionals are gonna go short. Looking for it to keep coming down. They'll throw in the towel if the red line closes over 21, in my opinion. In SLV, 
still losing to the gold. Look at how you're back down now to the 100-day average. Nothing to do there. Copper market, higher high, lower low, oversold, a difficult market. TLT, lower highs, lower lows. I'm still in the bear camp. I mean, I don't understand the idea that people are keep buying this and saying it's going to go higher. However, it's 20-year plus. It's not the short end of the market. So if it's not the short end, you will get to that number just the way you did before, whatever that the rate's going to be, and the traders will reverse on it and say the Fed's so close to not doing anything more that the back end will go down in that yield. And I think they'll be right. So it's a question of when. It's not here. That's what I'm saying. In the dollar, okay, do you, if are higher rates going to put the dollar up or are higher rates going to hurt the U.S. economy? Which one of the two? And that's the battle that's going on right now. Now, at this point in time, you have both numbers over 80, but barely. I think you'd agree with that. Yesterday, if we take a look, both numbers were not over 80. So you're overbought not embedded, and the market has to decide, does it want to go for that process? And if it does, then you're putting into the limelight right here, the 2813 level, the upper Bollinger Band, if you really popped, 2855. If you correct being overbought and decide to come down, you're back in the play at 2765. So the market has not made a decision. I am not talking out of both sides of my mouth, as one character wrote. No, when there's no trend, there's no trend, okay? I'm giving you the what ifs. FXE, the flip-flop of the dollar. Lower highs, lower lows. If it gets to the 18-day average at 99.84, it has to break through this high of 99.56, breaking the downtrend. So the best thing as a bear this market can do is just fall, but it's oversold. It's the flip-flop of the dollar. It's not embedded. So you put it all together, you come up with game plans, and here's what I think tomorrow's going to offer. I think tomorrow's going to be what I like to call a trader's delight. When you get wide ranges on a day like today, it's rare that you come in the next day and you're just one-sided. You're going to be all over the board. Pivot points use that. And what they do is they take today's range, they come up with two numbers that are sells, two that are buys. I apply momentum to it, and the traders step into those outer bands and they're trying to catch the flips in the market. Was it going like that today? Oh boy, I was watching it going, these guys are having a ball with that. And that's what it was. Because you know, remember, after the CPI, you went up first 300 points, then you dropped a total of seven from the high to the low. How do you get this free course? Did you hear me? Free. No obligation on your part. Go to our website under free offers. You can click up here, free offers. You can call my staff. They'll get it to you. I think you'll learn something with it. I'm I. Rapstein. Talk to you first thing in the morning. Take care.